Hello and welcome to Kerbal Service Ram. This is the STS Envoy by Flack Badger, and this this is the entire reason I'm making a video today is because someone made another stock space shuttle that is really cool. And um, believe me, I have tried to make a stock shuttle and I have failed quite miserably. What is that a monoprop? There's not even a that's that's an SRB. Those are Vernier engines. There's not even an RCS system on there. I'm guessing maybe it's to power these RCS ports that are on the cockpit here. Oh yes, it's got a... Uh, it's slightly clippy in ways that I don't like. And what are these? Oh, that's... wait. Oh, that's just part of the uh, cockpit design. I hadn't noticed those, actually. Those little... They, they look almost like cameras or something. There's little, like, viewports or something. I don't even know. But yeah, someone, aka Flak Badger, created... Are those the access ports on the bottom? Oh, they're on both sides. Really? Oh, emergency use only. Rescue. Rescue. Emergency use only. Huh, I hadn't noticed that before, that these have rescue ports instead of entrances and exits. There's there's no entrance and exit per se, it's just the uh, rescue port. Yeah, so it's a stock space shuttle, and it apparently works quite well. It caught my interest, uh, it was posted on the subreddit, and it caught my interest primarily uh, because of its braking system, which uses these flaps, uh, well, control surfaces, to brake as it comes in for a landing, rather than just being reliant on, oh yes, it also has some air brakes, but rather than just being reliant on the air brakes, it also has flaps used as air brakes, if that makes sense. And so I wanted to go ahead and download it and take a look at it, and that's what I'm doing right now, and uh, there's an intake right there. Does this have a, uh, no, it has no jet engine thing on there. It's simply used for a structural piece slash design piece to make it kind of fit together better. But yeah, you can see they, they've followed some of the general ideas of what space shuttles were like, but they've also done their own little creative thing here and there. And um, you might have also noticed that this is, this is throwing me off a little, the way this is designed here. Interesting. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a crew or a cargo crew cargo shuttle. It's not a it's not a cargo shuttle. It's a crew shuttle. That was weird wording. Oh my god, this has a heat shield on the bottom. Why why would you Oh, maybe it's supposed to be recoverable. That's interesting. I wonder if it is. Let's see if it has anything here. Ah yes, the Envoy was built on the already successful STS Ambitious platform as a way to satisfy the increasing number of space tourists. Yep. 16 tourists and 4 crew to low carbon orbit. Press 0 to open the hidden cupola. Press 2 to open the do- no- doze? Nose docking port. 3 to open the dorsal docking port. Yeah, it's got two <coughs> docking ports. Press 9 and hold B on re-entry to deploy control services and air brakes. Oh, so he put the control surfaces on 9 rather than on the actual brake button. Yeah, I suppose that that makes sense, actually. So that's that's an interesting way to do things, though. Let's go ahead and uh, try giving this a launch and hope for the best. All right, it's a clear sky today. Yeah, I took out the environmental visual enhancements because I was having some crashes and someone told me that it might be that that was causing them. So I don't know if you heard that. That was weird. Someone made a weird noise. All right, well, in any case, here we are, ready to go. And the uh, launch pad seems to be breaking beneath us. So, uh, let's, let's hope that's no big deal. As we floor... Oh my god. <laughs> that's, uh, pretty sure that's not part of the standard launch procedure. But, uh... Yeah, there we go. Sideways off of the pad. Let's see. Are we burning? Yeah, we're burning three engines. Oh yes, I have the engine light mod, so that's why it looks pretty bright in here, is because all those engines firing. I'm wondering maybe if I should perhaps turn that off. This uh, did not come with any flight instructions, so that is a potential problem. Also, it is um, having fun with my performance. I didn't check how many parts it has, but it has a lot unfortunately and my game does not like having a lot of parts right well while we could go to orbit sideways I'm thinking it would better if we rolled so uh, oops that's the wrong way around we're going to uh, roll over to alright wait no not quite gonna roll just a little bit more and come on roll just a little more there you go oh now it's rolling too much Thanks, controls. Thank you so much. Okay, now we... There we go. We're on... We're on target. Um, are we about to lose our first stage of... Are we about to lose the SRVs entirely? Oh, no, just... 
Oh, okay, it came with boosters that aren't actually attached to the rest of the fuel to help it get started. Interesting. Wonder why they had to do that. Ah oh, yes, we do have the scatterer mod though, so that is cool. Oh yeah, I forgot about this. Yeah, this is a bug that happens in with scatterer. That's funny. Alright, so our apopsis is very small right now. We're not going terribly fast, but that's okay. This thing would... <gasps> Did you see that? The, uh... The uh, launch plat, the uh, the things we took off from just appeared next to us. Hold on. Oh no, they're down there now. But they they appeared briefly up here. That was very weird. We are going sideways a bit to the north. Oh, are we overheating? Is that like warning me that we're overheating slightly? Nope. I don't want the vernier engine. I'm looking at this. Uh, it doesn't say anything. But I am getting that little bit of red overlay, which I think means overheating. I actually haven't run into- I haven't been playing enough with this version to see the overheating stuff. Because I haven't, you know, overheated anything. I think I should be pitching over more at this point. But I didn't think about it until just now- Oh, they just reappeared beneath us again! Our, uh, launch stabilizers are, uh, following us to orbit. That is an interesting bug. Wow, this thing is bright. All those engines firing. I should probably- I'm, I'm probably gonna actually take that mod- mud? Mod out? Cause... In retrospect, I'm not- I'm not enjoying it as much as I thought I would. I think these are probably- yep, there are booster engines. So those will be running out, uh, fairly soon, but not- not just yet. I mean, it's only been a minute and thirty seconds game time in this flight. So, it's very quick to get up here. Of course, it is running a bit slower than I would like it to. Oh, they just reappeared again. Oh, and now we get the pretty destruction effects as those fall away. And the engines on this thing are dangerously in the red. But I think we'll be okay. It's starting to warn me about them overheating. But again, I think we'll be okay. Our apopsis is uh, a little under halfway to where we need it to be. But otherwise, things are going well. I'm beginning to wonder if I should be worried about those engines. Or what they're mounted on, because whatever they're mounted on, if the heat tolerance isn't as good, they could uh, break anyhow. But it looks like everything's running alright. Like, I'm definitely having to keep an eye on them, but I think everything's working out just fine. Let's see, our apopsis, 38. Probably could pitch down a bit more, but then again, I want to make sure we really get into orbit. I don't know what the tolerances are or the flight profile is supposed to be for this thing, because it didn't really come with those instructions, which is unfortunate, but uh, everything seems to be going well so far. We're about halfway to orbital velocity, a little over halfway to the altitude we need to be. Whoop. Come on. There we go. I somehow managed to confuse it to turn off entirely. That's kind of funny. Alright. Checking map. Alright, uh, we're managing to push our apopsis out ahead of us, and it's getting higher still, so we're doing pretty well. Throttling down slightly, because our engines are overheating. Throttling down a bit more. I just noticed there are no action groups to shut off the main engines, so I'm guessing they're separated from the fuel flow from our secondary engines. Oh, shit. Oh yeah, let's turn the uh, RCS back on. Oops, there we go. Alright, resuming our burn to orbit. Our apopsis is already at 80,000. Let's go ahead and turn down the engines to very low. And let's go ahead and let ourselves uh, pitch down ever so slightly. Oh yeah, we are losing control without the RCS, which is unfortunate. Because it'd be nice to not have to worry about it. In fact, we had probably, probably ditched this stage now, but I'm not sure. I don't know how it was designed precisely with these different stages and what they're capable of. So I'd rather go ahead and keep it on board and use whatever fuel is in it to get us as high as possible.
Our apopsis is getting very high. I'm going to go ahead and cut the engine now. Or cut the engines, as the case may be. I love how slowly the heat dissipates in space. Alright, let's eject the tank. Roll over. Which technically we should have done much earlier in the flight, but uh, oh well. I forgot we had uh, RCS still engaged. I'm gonna go ahead and put us at uh, 5 degrees under. Just fire up the engines real fast to test that they're actually operational. And now I'll time warp to our apoapsis. Okay, that's not the right button. Oh well. <coughs> Excuse me. Wow, I like I love how the engines are actually still really hot. Right, let's check the map. Probably could nose down a little and be okay. And let's see what our fuel's like. We've used a fairly good amount of it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the engines at in a periapsis of 30,000. All right. At 30,000, we're a little over halfway, but I didn't fly. <laughs> hey, look! Our stability enhancers are here! <laughs> Why did they follow us to orbit? Doesn't make any sense. <laughs> right. Well, anyhow, yes. Now, of course, this could make it to orbit. If it was flown a bit better, more efficiently, it would definitely be able to make it to orbit and do some maneuvers. It probably could even take the tank up all the way to orbit, but uh, I did not fly it the best way for that this time round. And the reason I left our periapsis at 31,000 is I'm going to do a re-entry test to show off the brakes that it has when you come in for a landing and re-entry. And uh, hopefully this is a good uh, flight angle for descent, for landing. We shall see. Alright. And we have just started to hit the atmosphere. I'm going to uh, push and hold the brake button, aka just hit the button up there. And I'm going to tap 9 to uh, activate the ninth action group. And, yep, you can see that engine's still trying to cool down. <laughs> That's so cool. Whoa, we're starting to have some instability issues here. Whoa. This thing is not liking something about the way we're coming in. It's wobbling. That's uh, not necessarily a good thing. I bet those are our stability enhancers over there. We're doing a pretty good job of slowing down, though. Um... I'm beginning to be worried that we're not actually going to make it to uh, sunrise. <laughs> well then, I am sorry. Oh, there we go. Sunlight. Yay. So you can see the front of this thing. Uh-oh. That is not... This thing does not... Oh, you know what? Part of that is probably to do with the fact that I was in time warp. So uh, let me... <laughs> kind of forgot that I'd left it in time warp. Okay. Nine. I'm guessing, yeah, nine controlled the uh, control surfaces, so I just turned that off. I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn off the brakes as well because we are definitely going slow enough to not have to worry about heat anymore. So yeah. Oh hey, look, a little RCS thruster down here under the uh, landing gear. We're actually uh, plummeting like a rock. Very much like the real shuttle would in this circumstance, I'm sure. I'm going to go ahead and fire this up, fire these two engines up. I'm going to go ahead and use up all the fuel that's left in them, and also use that fuel to try and get us going a bit further, a bit faster. Oh yeah, with those on, I can show you when I hit 9. Oh, <laughs> see how the flaps are moving on their own? Yep, that's what 9 does. And then of course the brakes open up the air brakes, and also the landing gear brakes if I had those on, which I don't, but oh well. Let's see, I could just keep pulling up forever, or I could just let this thing dive like it wants to. And uh, actually looks like I'm just going to have to let it dive because it's not doing a very good job of holding itself up anymore. So yeah, that was the STS in Envoy? Envoy? I think it was called the Envoy. Uh, what's your name? Yes, the STS Envoy. And I just lost all control authority, didn't I? Yep. Nice. All right, let's roll it over and uh, crash it into the ocean. Oh wow, something uh, something was sparking a bit there. That's interesting. Apparently our landing gear is down. No, it's not. The light just thought we were. It's nice and bright in the cockpit. Nice and dark out there. Can't even tell we're going to our death. Look at that. 
It's very nice. Alright, this thing's flying surprisingly well at a very low speed. So I'm just going to try and uh, glide her in. And I'm going to activate the brakes and the flat brakes. And we're pretty much going to fall into the ocean right about now. Uh, here it goes. And uh, it definitely wasn't the smoothest landing. However, the craft and the crew, well, most of the craft and the crew survived. Thanks for watching. As always, see you in space.